Let's get to discuss some of the uh, issues that we have for you. The IMF, the Tinobu government policies, and what this means altogether for Nigeria. I'm being joined tonight by an economist and the chief economist as the SPM professionals, Mr. Paul Alaji, who joins us virtually from Ibad on the Oyo State Capital. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Alaji, for joining us tonight. Now, people, as some people have warned, be careful of the Bretton Wood Institution, IMF World Bank. Their policies are impoverishing the Nigerian people. Well, they have said, well, we are talking to Nigeria, but hold your government accountable to their policies, especially the removal of first subsidy. When you hear that kind of uh, messaging from the IMF as a, res as a response to question in respect of the policies that a lot of people thought that the IMF or the World Bank are behind. What do you think exactly is going on, Mr. Alaji? Well, first of all, I, I think IMF now realize uh, that the policy that has been made in Nigeria, it may take a very long time if it will ever lead to development or growth at all. You recall that on the 29th of May, the president had announced that subsidy is gone. It appeared as though, as of that time, there was no plan as to what will be what government will do to reduce the impact of poverty, hunger, and deprivation on the people. But what we have seen was that I think around the second week of June, the central bank also announced the flotation of Naira. And since that happened, in a regime where we subsidy is gone, even though one has concerns whether subsidy was gone completely up until recently or not, you know that it's like throwing double blow on someone's face. IMF now, I've, I've seen, in fact, I must, I must confess to you that what bank issued a report, the what bank report that was issued in 2023 was that if Nigeria don't have a safe landing for the vulnerable and the poor, we would add approximately 5.1 million Million people to poverty bracket. And uh, the fact that World Bank I mentioned that 10 million people have now been added to poverty bracket. So you have 10 million people added to poverty bracket. And now IMF, that uh, we heard, uh, I remember I had this conversation with you when IMF mentioned that they were going to, uh, uh, they advised Nigerian government to remove subsidy on electricity. And when subsidy on electricity was removed, Nigeria resolved to having band A's, and you could see uh, the, the aftermath effect on cost line and pricing. So for me, IMF is saying we are not going to take responsibility. Your government have not approached us for, um, for what is it called now? Government is yet to approach them on loans, but if government comes, they will certainly uh, look at it on the merit of it. My advice is that you recall that this year alone, we have spent six trillion naira to service debt. Why did we remove some? One of the arguments the last administration had was that subsidy was no longer sustainable. Why? They mentioned that we, we, we have spent 3.3 trillion. If by the end of year 2023, we continue subsidy, we would have spent over six trillion naira on subsidy. This year alone, half a year, we have spent six trillion naira to service debt. And IMF, the same IMF, in the same report, mentioned that most part of Nigerian revenue is now spent to service debt. Now, if we think that a fire, a, I mean, fire is burning a, a, a house, do we say that we should put more fuel in order to put out the fire? That would be absolute insanity. My question here, or my concern here, is that we need to do something very quickly, very urgently, other than looking at foreign loans, especially foreign loans. I remember in 2022, 2023, I did a research that revealed that 99% uh, impact, negative impact, is what foreign loan causes for Nigeria in the last five years. 89% negative impact. So when IMF says that they will borrow, we have some American government saying, we're going to go and borrow money, and when we borrow this money, we will use it to show up the foreign reserve. The question is, when it finishes, what else are we going to do? Remember that the former administration printed approximately $50 billion in Naira. It was printed. And people wonder why is inflation had remained with us for long. In fact, IMF recent report projected that Nigeria inflation will remain 32.5% by the end of 2024, and that Nigeria's growth will moderate, will reduce uh, slightly 
to about 32 uh, to about 30, I mean, to about 2.9 percent from current above 3 percent. So here is the point. I am of the opinion uh, that considering the position need with IMF is what we need to rethink very All quickly. Right. It does not mean that all IMF policies are wrong. Right. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying with the nature of our economy, we need to think very carefully again before we adopt any classical approach or classical theory or classical model, which you know is what drives IMF and World Bank together. Quickly, let's get it straight and let's let the cat bear. So, uh, I mean, there are those who will say, is it true that the Tunubu government is listening to IMF or the World Bank? Is it a crime to listen to them, take their policy advisory and implementing them? Uh, there are those who ask that question. Uh, when people have criticized the government of the day of listening and implementing the policies of the IMF or the Bretton Woods uh, institution, but the question here is, in the post-financing uh, uh, um, uh, assessment report of the IMF, he said it clearly, categorically. The government of Nigeria should immediately remove subsidy on fuel and electricity, that it is overburdening itself. Now, and you will hear World Bank, who says a few days ago, that there must be consistency in some of the policy that the government is pursuing so that they can be able to get adequate results. Now, these policies are saying remove the burden on government, then put it on the people. That is what it looks like to me. Now, tell us, Mr. Alaje, point blank. The Tinubu government has been listening and implementing the IMF uh, policies, true or false. Do we now regret implementing those policies because it has uh, backfired? Is that the position of things as it, to, as it is today? Clearly, I must tell you that we have been adopting IMF World Bank advisory over the years. And this is not the, this will not be the first time we are adopting those policies. And you see that IMF and World Bank from time to time, when we have major events like meeting with National Bureau of Statistics, or even when they want to only, I mean, when they want to unveil some of their reports, they mention that they have met with Nigeria Authority. And in most recent, maybe most recently, World Bank representative said they are they, they are they approve of the policy Nigerian government is following as advice. And that they will want to advise Nigerian government not to uh to to to, to uh, backtrack on some of those policies why because in their words it will be disastrous i differ completely i remember in 2016 the imf chair ahead that came to nigeria christian lagarde told president buari that nigeria economy is resilient is strong and we're not going to a recession i was in media popular media media station including i'm not sure whether channels was involved at the time or not but some popular media station and i said nigeria economy we certainly go into a recession how did i know i knew because of research i knew because of what has happened before nigeria economy will go into a recession when global oil prices go below certain level christine lagarde the imf chief could not control that price neither could nigeria president as he then was president Buhari, control the price or myself because when we make gains as a nation, we do not plan on infrastructure. We do not plan on things that drive development. And let me say my concern generally about IMF and World Bank. I am not saying they are not good institutions. No, they are great institutions. But when it comes to the issue of Africa, especially Nigeria, here is my concern. One, I have not seen direct policy that will take Nigeria from import dependence to export oriented. I have not seen that. I have not seen a policy or an advice. That we live that we liberate Nigeria from an economy that is debt driven. And I'm not saying it is wrong to, to, to borrow. I'm saying that what are we doing with the borrowings if we are spending six trillion alone to service debt half a year? So I'm Mr. Saying Mr. Alaje, Mr. Alaje, Mr. Alaje, Alaje, want to Yeah. So the, the, the big question here is that has the Tunubu government have its fingers burnt in implementing these well, policies? Because the truth is that for some of the the for some of the policies, let me give you one straight. Especially on those, rate, those who will say the subsidies. Rate, yes, we are getting more yes, money. The, the, the subsidies, for to, example, I will get right? The subsidy. You see, like, so many Nigerians talk about subsidy, but the real problem we have is exchange rates. Even if we say that we are giving subsidy again, an exchange rate and then I guess the value to two thousand, the price of PMS will still go up. Everything will go up. So on floating denier. It was not what we should have done. I think it was a, it was not correct. It was not a correct decision to take. 
at a time. And I will give you instance. Look at other countries that are producing oil, especially in the Middle East. I tweeted it on, on, on my on my ex page, on my Twitter page. And a number of persons debated it, and I provided responses to them. Oh, look at Kuwait, look at Saudi Arabia, look at United Arab Emirates. All these countries provide one subsidy, or one form of subsidy or, or the other. But you see, that is not the good, great news. It's good news. The great news is that most of these countries take their currency. You see, one of the challenges we have today, if we decide to make policy, or IMF advice, provide advisory on policies, that we help Nigeria to peg exchange rate to 800, 1,000, at most 1,100 so, to the so, dollar, I'm, then you will see that inflation yeah. will be moderate. You will see that poverty level will reduce. Ms. You will Ms. see Ms. that hunger and deprivation will reduce. Mr. Alaje, do, do, I mean, like Mr. Opi will say, he wants to take Nigeria from consumption to production. If you are going to produce, it doesn't, even when you are farming, you have to wait for a harvest. Uh, yes, I mean, producing will be the perfect way for you to make your economy, you know, to be stronger. Now, the question is that the small scale and the medium scale, what is their place in our economy? Which economy no, in the global world is, is, is no, doing well without those, without those sectors? The question here, Mr. No, they have a lot of place. Mr. Recently, recently, I need to say this, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry agree with me on this point. And I thought perhaps I was the only boy. So until Lagos Chamber of Commerce in, in a retreat mentioned that for them to continue to exist, Naira must be paid. Or government must give a special rate to industry at 1,000. See, no matter how small scale your business is, exchange rate will affect you. It's like air that you breathe. If you don't do something about it, if it remains volatile, it will, it will be tantamount to deliberately weakening the powers of, 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 of people in the economy. So Paul, Paul, whether Paul, we say Paul, Paul. eventually we will produce or not, yeah. well, to a large extent, that decision has to be made, and one day it will be made. This is where I'm going with my question now. So if we say we're going to do anything, it, will not, it may not happen overnight. But the, the big deal no, here... No, it can. It can happen overnight. No, it can happen overnight. And what can, what, what over can this position. government do no, you that can happen us. overnight? I will tell you. What can we do I will to tell absorb you. the shocks? I will tell you, you reveal to us with your colleagues on Channel TV how over 700 barriers of food is stolen in Nigeria. Under the last administration, you reveal to us the humongous amount of food that is stolen. See, 700,000 barriers of food multiplied by $80 account for it in a year. With about 30, 538 billion dollars we have in our reserve, had that amount to it. It's enough for us to peg our currency at maybe 1,000, maybe 1,200, maybe 1,100. Okay, so but now... For us to say that we cannot protect the currency, in, in a way, we are saying that whatever happens in terms of pressure, we will allow our economy to flow through. Let, and let's, I don't let, think let's break, the right let, Let's break it down for, for the sake of some of our viewers. A segment of my audience on this program, we love it when we... Uh, some of us who are not very fantastic with mathematics and the figures, but very figure shy. But let's break it down for a, a very simple understanding. Uh, when an Obasanjo comes and says, look, this government does not look like it's, he knew what he wanted to do when they came into power. He doesn't do like they understand what they wanted when they came into office. Is it looking like it is so, or is it that things were so bad that they got into office they met what they could not contain. What exactly do you think is the problem with this government? That now, this, this economy is, is becoming too, vol too, too, res too volatile or too difficult for them to handle. It's about on your right that this government was not prepared to deal with the economic problem or what exactly is giving this government problems? Well, I tell you that uh, when President uh, Tunubu came to office, he was, I assume, the most prepared individual because the president told us during campaign that this is what he has spent his entire life. So if eventually, luckily, graciously, we now have a president, President Chinubu, if we now say that he's not prepared, then I'm concerned. I think knowing what to do is the real challenge regarding our economies. Why? For most people that are steering the economy of the country, they are all following the same approach that we call the classical approach in economies. Hoping that in the...
be sure of when it will be. So when we base policy, uh, policy decision on policy outcome that is assumed or we cannot control, then it's a big challenge. So to my mind, I'm of the opinion that uh, the administration might have prepared so many, so many things, but might not be certain or might not be exact regarding what the economy is doing now, what the economy appears to be. Because classical approach will tell you that demand and supply, when you can manage them, you are going to see results. That is elementary economics. When you study and further, you realize that there is so many assumptions in that, that when you demand, you supply, they, they are factored out transport, they are factored out energy, they are factored out so many things. That is why those who must take and who must, who must be in, in charge of affairs of the economy must not just be knowledgeable uh, in terms of economic uh, actions or economic things that has to do with the, with, with, uh, with, with the economy. They must understand clearly what are the possible orders that they will encounter when they are making such decisions so that your policy aim will, will eventually result in the expected policy outcome. Unfortunately, have we seen that? No. Why did I say that? What should we be seeing as an economy now? Look at our GDP, uh, around 3%. We expected, according to uh, the budget presented by the president, that GDP should be 6%. So we are doing 50% of that. What is the exchange rate? Authority expected to moderate down. What we have seen is over 1,600, and it's now being sustained. What is inflation? Inflation, they're supposed to be between 6 to 9%. Government said maybe 21, 26% is now over 30%. Most economic parameters are going in the wrong direction. So do I say that President, uh, uh, former President Obasanjo is correct? I would say yes. Do I say that government don't have good intention for Nigeria? I will say no. But having good intention, but knowing what to do, and the right time to take that decision is a different board game entirely. For right. instance, before subsidy announcement was made, one would have expected that there would have been platform. And, and not to just pay attention only on President Tinubu, Five billion naira each we heard in the media was shared to the state government, whether the complete money was paid or part money. But what we have heard most of the time is that rice is what is shared. What is price of rice today? Rather than price of rice going down or rice circulating, we continue to see increase in prices because the economy cannot be handled from one side. It's an holistic thing. And if we must come out of economic quagmire, we must look at it in such manner, such that our economy will be free. And indeed, we will say that we are free from the shackles of poverty, hunger, and deprivation. So now, let, 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 me, let me ask you, you are the expert, uh, expert here. So I'm, 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 I mean, reading and uh, having conversations with people, uh, there are the, those who are of the school of thought that, look, when your, your, your currency is battling with a, a foreign currency that is a major determinant in the direction of your economy, you need to uh, put those kind of uh, currency in your economy in one way or the other to allow the money to flow in the economy and ease the tension on your current. I don't know whether that policy or that, uh, that principle is correct. There are those who believe that go to IMF, get some loan, get some dollars into this economy, it will reduce the pressure on the Nigerian Nara. Does that make sense to you? Should that be the way to go for the Nigerian economy? Because the way things are shooting in the sky, in the Nara against the dollar uh, parity, it's going to be a, a very bad one towards December. Uh, is that a good principle, a, a direction that we should look at, Mr. Alaje? It's a, quick, it's a quick fix principle. This is not the first time. Again, I take you back to the last administration where President Jonathan left office. What was Nigerian debt profile? About $12 billion. What did President Buhari, how did he leave the office? We were badly indebted, coupled with the fact that we had ways and means that made the situation worse. Let me ask you, and those people watching us all around the world today, if you want to import anything into Nigeria, for instance, from China, on an internet, I don't want to mention the website. Every few buttons on your phone, it is so easy to import some things to Nigeria and you pick it maybe in the post office. But let's say we want to export. I give you an instance. We were going to export two trailers of rice as first instance to Cameroon. We were told to get paper from this office, from that office, and eventually the time for even inquiring about how easy it would be to export. We could not supply. As at, as at the time that it was needed. Now, so here is the issue. We still have a lot of bottlenecks on the, re, on the real solution. 
the real solution remains productivity, number one, number two, exports. And when you look at conversation that we are having in the media space and within the economy, we speak less of productivity. We speak less of, or sometimes even very insignificantly uh, when we mention exports. It's just the theory part of it. What are the efforts that you and I can say that government over the years have put in place for Nigeria to become a major export zone of whatever products that we want to we want to export. So when we borrowing end, we want to go back to IMF to borrow because this is how we, we stimulate the atmosphere. It's as though so the argument in the short run it will end. Mm. But when are we going to stop importing school uniform? We have over 44 million pupils. They wear uniform. 40 million of those uniforms, the 40 out of the 44, what 40 million wear? They are imported fabrics. Yeah, we can give to so, but, 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 Mr. To Laje, when, when people or, say, or, when people say, to yeah. solve those clothes for them. But where are they coming from? When, when, we continue to end. Yeah, we continue to enrich China and so many other countries, what? saying that Nigeria don't have the capacity. We do, but we have chosen not to produce. We have chosen not to become productive, and we have chosen not to become an export zone. So when people say that um, uh, we import a lot and we are import, in, in, import dependent, and I'm asking the question, what is it, why is it so difficult to stop some of this importation? Let us, for three, four, five years, focus on Enrich, enriching some of these sectors that you will shut out. And for a moment, let's think about our country. We're thinking too much of globalization in our economy than localization. Because you, you first of all need to think about your people before you think global. Well, all economies, they operate on a global scale. But then, how much, how, how far can we go? How long must we go in depending on whatever comes out of this country while killing the local industry? But well, that's my own personal thought. But this is how I want you to anchor, uh, Mr. Alaji. You said that the Buhari government was woeful, terrible with the economy. But is uh, the Tunubu government looking like a senior brother of a badly running eco uh, uh, economy in terms of the manner in which they run the economy? For you, if you think you are the one who well, said that the Buhari government yeah. set us back 20 years economically now, is Tinubu government doing worse than Buhari government? Well, in terms of economy, I will tell you that this administration has not been able to do up to what the last administration did. And this is not for me to believe. It is National Bureau of Statistics that said so. Inflation is better under the administration than now. Unemployment is better because the administration, if they reviewed the unemployment rate and they gave it to this administration at 4%, now it's 5.2 percent. Exchange rate is better under that administration than now. What this administration has not done that that administration did very badly and woefully was printing of currency. This administration, to my mind, except it is not yet in public domain, has not done that. Another thing this administration has done, which this administration did not do well, is that this administration has tried to improve on our foreign reserve. So over 35, I think about 38 billion dollars. But when it comes to infrastructure, apart from FCT, and I must pay attention to Lagos State that has partnered with the federal government on the red line project. And I've advised the remaining governors that have access to the same infrastructure. You know that federal government has on the rail track, go and partner with Ministry of Transport, partner with the Nigeria Railway Corporation, that we bring immediate ease to your people. That is why I give so much respect to the government of Lagos State and its team, and especially the matter for bringing that project to Lagos. So there are few things they've done, but in some areas, economic indicators shows that it is worse, it is worse than the former administration. Meanwhile, there are some areas they have done and they have improved on. But the things that seem to be the big elephant on the neck. Oh dear. Seems that the network is just uh, frustrating our conversation. Dr. Paul Alaje, uh, an economist and chief economist at SPM Professionals. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, some of uh, what has become uh, a people, and uh, a poor people or average person-oriented policy, the credit core, uh, the student loan. I hope that we'll see more of this so that the average person's life can be better. But the way things are going in the country, the poor is really uh, suffering and they are feeling the heat. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul Alaje. You are you are almost saying something about the elephant in the room before the uh, the connection cut you off. The elephant in the room is exchange rates. All 
the gains this administration has made, exchange rates, that is, it never increases from 1,600 to 2,000. It will wipe off everything. All the gains. That is why we need to be extremely careful and not to listen to the sweetness, the soundness of what some institutions are telling us. If we do that, remember, I think last week of this week, you, inter you spoke with the MD of uh, Transition Company of Nigeria. And you asked him, I watched your show with him, you asked him a sincere question. Why is the price increasing? The first response he gave to you is that, have you seen exchange rates? He said that unconsciously. Exchange rate, if it continues to like this, it may eventually it may eventually wipe away all the gains the administration have, have, have made. Already, we have a significant improvement in our FAQ, which is going to federal, state, and local government. And my final advice is that as governors, invest this money on your people. Put it back in the economy. Don't convert money to extra, to any currency. I'm not challenging anybody. I'm not saying anybody is doing it. But the allegation, especially what the central bank governor said, that that seems to be a correlation. All right. Please, let's put it in infrastructure for local government, those that are receiving, put it in the life of your people. Let's see improvement and let's right. be sincere by robbing our people and improving the quality of life of Nigerians. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Paul Alaje. Uh, um, for those who are in government, uh, maybe you are too, uh, you've been carried away by uh, this different uh, convoy and you're not able to see the sufferings of the people. If you are in the villa, if you are in, in the parliament, or if you are in the judiciary, people need to understand that a lot of Nigerians are suffering. The bottom line is that the average person is finding it difficult to feed. And when that is happening, there is danger in the land. That needs to be fixed. Thank you so much for the insight tonight, Dr. Paul Alagi. I appreciate it.